crash. Right, guys, remember the rules in the dressing room. Make sure you obey my commands. We're gonna have a clean fight. If you wanna to touch gloves, do it now. Come out fighting. Three five-minute rounds are what we are scheduled for here at XMMA. Eric Apple joined, of course, by the former world heavyweight champion, Frank Mir. Let's get it on. 15 minutes of action with Kyle Bak Bakhtiak and Marcus Brimage. Now, we talked about this, Frank. Kyle Bakhtiak has a size advantage, but Marcus Brimage believes not cutting very much weight is going to be an advantage to him. Let's see who's right. Yeah, that was an argument or discussion we had earlier, talking about, hey, is it better Whoa. to be the heavy guy and maybe not feel 100%, but you get size and bully the guy around? Or do you want to feel good, be active, be able to bounce around and fight at 100%? I mean, it's a noticeable size difference. I agree with you. And I think that Marcus is probably going to look smaller than most guys in this division. Low kick there. Bakhtiak moving forward, trying to control the cage. Nice attempt at a straight left there for uh, Marcus Brimage. Oh, good shot there. And again, Bakhtiak, he, he absorbs shots. It's almost like he needs to do it, and he says he does. Some guys, especially with more that's common in boxing, you'll see guys that are just kind of slower starters. And predominantly, a lot of our slow starters in MMA you know, tend to be strikers. You know, guys at that first round yeah. just kind of get into it. Wrestling and grappling tends to be much more aggressive. There isn't really that slow starter type mentality in those sports. Bakhtiak still continue to push forward. Marcus Brimage is circling around the edge of the cage. And that's gonna, you know, that's gonna wear on you and that matters when you're the one who's on your feet, on your horse. Constantly moving feet. Yeah, and he's, a lot of his movements are bigger movements, jumping in, trying to score with shots and jump back out. But Bakhtiak is keeping a much more traditional, conservative stance. So he's staying with his feet in a boxing position, one foot in front of the other, not really running back or forth, so that he can edge in with small steps coming behind his jabs, crosses. I see a nice tight stance there from Bakhtiak as well. Elbows in, elbows in high and tight. Yep, he moves forward in stance where Brimage is much more of a karate style movement. The big movements in and out. Oh, good exchange. In, and they're paid off for him. Good exchange of those two. Switching stances and using the side kick. Oh. Brimage looked like he's playing with fire standing in front of Bakhtiak. Well, he tried throwing a good combination again. His seems to be his uh, you know, game plan tonight is stay on the outside, come in with some straight shots blitzing, and then get back out of there before he can receive any payment back from uh, Bakhtiak. Also, I don't know if you noticed, but at the end of that exchange, Bakhtiak landed a pretty good lo low kick to that calf. And you know anything, a good calf shot can end your mobility for the night. Yeah, fans at home don't understand how that works with that nerve oh. in the leg, but it's very effective. It I hurts sometimes right the shin hand. guards on. You're yeah. sparring guys and landing like, all right, hey, just don't do that anymore. <laughs> you, you, it works. You, you got it. <laughs> oh, nice right hand from Bakhtiak moving forward. Here's the thing, early on, these big movement styles that you know, Marcus Brimage is bringing to uh, are successful as long as your energy is at a high level. But Another as, low calf kick. Yeah, and as the Third. fight starts edging on, the more conservative, smaller movement style of Bakhtiak is going to add up and be easier to do in the second and third round. You know, I want to say I noticed that uh, we saw those kicks added up, three or four of them, and Marcus Brimage switched to southpaw. Yep, that's usually a sure sign that the kick lands on Guy switches stance and he puts that leg behind him. And you know, Bakhtiak really a, a bully moving forward. He, he loves the trade. Yeah, forward, hands up, knees bent. Yeah, good. Loaded. I mean, he, he really is a picture of what you tell what you say a yes. fighter's supposed to look like. Yeah, for this style, 100 percent Nice conservative. Traditional yeah. kickboxing boxing style. Yeah. Hands high, elbows in, very clean. And he keeps his feet under his hips, which is important. Yes, 100%. For those that style to work, you have to make sure your weight is over your knees at all times. Otherwise, you, you're off balance. But some guys use that. Marcus is using that style of being off yeah. balance. When he moves his head past his knees, like he did there to his left, he's using that to create momentum, and he runs that direction. 
But still, as we said earlier, Bakniak control. Oh, spinning back to Bakniak really controlling the the pace and controlling the position of the fight. He's in the center of the cage, pushing Marcus Brimage around. Last 10 seconds of the first round. Very tight from Bakniak. Nice body oh. shot. Great body shot there to end the first round. Impressive round. And Bakniak this time didn't have to take so much damage in the first round. Not at all, you know. Uh, you know, he did take some shots. Marcus Brimage is, is doing a good job of, oh, not, I wonder if that uh, uh, was a downward facing dog is to, uh, due to the uh, body shot, or is that something he normally does? Yeah, I don't We saw the right hand momentarily drop Marcus Brimage. Yeah, and there we return with a good left hand. So in the corner, we're not seeing it right now, but Marcus Brimage is kind of bent over, hands on the on the ground, feet on the, on the ground as well, like a downward facing dog like yoga position. I'm pretty sure that was planned, although I've never seen it before, Frank, have you? Not at all. Usually, if anything, you don't want to have weight on your hands and have your hips above your heart. Uh, you're trying to lower it down. I mean, something new to me, and uh, honestly, I mean, I'll probably catch it backstage ass. It was, it was definitely something that was planned. Oh, he was sure. there for a good 30 seconds. We're getting ready to start our second of three five-minute rounds here at the Bond Secure Wellness Center in Greenville, South Carolina. My name is Eric Apple. I'm joined by Frank Mir, and we have a great co-made event coming at you. Let's see, again, big movements from Marcus. Darting in, backing up, backing up, dart in, dart in. Straight left. Now he's using the jab because it's left side forward. Another thing I'm noticing dart is in, dart out. Another thing I'm noticing is Marcus Primage is switching southpaw to traditional. Bakniak is not doing that. He's staying nope. clean and composed and just moving forward, hands high, elbows in. Yeah, no, Marcus Primage has much more of a karate style. You know, you see the side kicks, the long strikes coming from out far away and then getting back out of there, using your feet to create distance. Uh, a Machida style, a Stephen uh, Wonderboy Thompson style, right? Whereas uh, Bakniak has more of a kickboxing traditional style where you keep your feet small footwork movements forward and back so to uh keep your power with you at all times now bakniak we talked about being the bigger fighter but i'll tell you what marcus brimage is, is not being pushed around in there and he's definitely in this fight this is interesting fight i 100 agree with you as far as uh you know it's hard to judge because you know, brimage is landing a lot of strikes he might be moving backwards but when he's darting in, he's landing shots See, like right here, I mean, that exchange, he threw three or four punches. Uh, Kyle didn't throw any there. So Kyle right now is kind of caught in a system where, because of the big movements of Marcus Primich, not standing where he needs to be able to unload of them. Uh, Man, Kyle's really loading up waiting yeah. for those counter shots. And, I mean, he's almost inviting Marcus Primich, come, come give me one or two and I'll give you a big one. Well, and if you watch boxing matches, they happen in close tighter. Even outside boxing is at jab distance. And so a lot of guys, you hear it, use your jab as a distance range finder. So once Kyle gets in jabbing distance, Marcus is there, he can unload his offense. The problem is that Marcus isn't staying in jabbing distance. He's staying just outside jabbing distance, darting in with strikes and trying to get back out. Again, in that exchange, we saw Kyle Bakniak land an outside low leg kick with his right leg. Marcus immediately switched back to southpaw. I don't know how much it's affecting him. I have a, I have a feeling it is a little bit. Great body yeah. shot. Great body shot. See how he's measuring him with the jab. Bakniak measured him with the jab, dropped low to the body, and then came back up and jabbed again to the head to re-measure and reset the distance where he feels comfortable throwing strikes. Yeah, Bakniak is so composed. And he just has absolutely no fear of trading in that pocket. Yeah, switch the I mean, there. He has game forward orthodox. If you watch him trade inside, there's absolutely no thought of backing out. No. He's only doing a pullback, step back type Please. movements where he just does enough to make you miss and stay within range. Bakhtin continue to move forward. And Brimage is smaller fighter for the weight class, so he's probably in great shape. But this has got to start. Oh. Oh, this has got to start to wear him out. Back it up. Best punch of the fight so far. Yeah. Back it up this much, it's got to wear him out. Oh, great body shots. Oh. Oh, Another body shot, followed by a right hook. Big shots here come from Bakniak. How much of this can Brimage take? He's got a minute and 50 seconds to go here in the second of three rounds. Now the problem is, is Bakniak gonna spend too much energy here trying to finish? How much is awarded for what he output? If he just lands everything on the arms, maybe he punches himself out. But a lot of those shots, even if they land on the forearms, the knees and the kicks, there's one thing taking a punch on the forearm. 
a whole different world taking someone's shin yeah. or their knee on the forearm. It jolts your shoulders, it drives you back. You still even feel the pressure come through and it shakes your head. And I, I don't think Kyle's slowing down at all, but he's breathing hard still. So. Yeah. He expended some energy there. I still feel he's within his conditioning. Yes. I don't think he overstated. But agree. you're right, he's pushed the pace, he, he's running. He pushed it out there, and I, I at least he's taking some breaths now, I can hear it. Nice shot. I like how though, he's going back to work. He's just staying behind his jab. Look for the jab, look for the jab. Boom, there he lands a punch. He did, he's even just extending his jab out, touching and going, okay, there you are. And he throws nice a shot. The body. Bakhtiak with a good mix of, of shots too. Head, body, as well as kicks. Great combos. Nice sneaky lead right. We got 40 seconds to go here in the second round. Brimage looks like he's hanging in there just fine. He's weathered some serious attacks. Oh, those are vicious, man. Oh, I know he blocked it, but I know what those feel like. They hurt. Bakhtiak has shown quite a quiver of punches and kicks. Great all-round attacks. Yeah, oh, left hand, though. Bakhtiak wore that one. He did. He let him know he hit him. Look at him walking his hands down. And that could be a problem for him because he gets hit and he wants to walk into that. He wants a knockdown drag out fight, but he's winning the fight pretty handily in this round. I wow. agree with you. Yeah, no, that's, that's an easy fight to score in Kyle Bakhtiak's uh, favor, marching forward. And I mean, on the flip side of that, you know, maybe not great to take a shot and just walk forward, but for Marcus Brimage here, you land probably one of your best shots in the fight, smash your guy, and then he sticks his tongue out and starts walking forward. <laughs> that could be very disheartening. Well, it's disheartening for him, but what I was saying is, you know, it, it could be Kyle Bakhtiak's, it's, it, he's, it's the only time he opened him, yes. himself up. Yeah, why make it a war when you're winning the fight this way? I agree with you. He needs to not get drawn out. Stick to the game plan. Be conservative with his footwork. Work behind that jab. When he gets in jabbing distance, unload that offense. Great body work there. You saw the Please. strikes to the, uh, the the ribs. And we also saw six body shots in a row, yes. a la Nick Diaz. Yeah, and those were vicious ones, too. Not just uh, yeah. shoe-shining type of uh, body work. I feel like most of those shots you, were, you could say were vicious. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, it was. None were too easy. <laughs> Kyle does throw with intentions. Hey, this is our third and final round for Marcus Brimage and Kyle Bokdak. Five minutes to go, Frank. And again, Kyle just marches across that. Marches across the cage right at him. There again, Mike Mark is back on his style. Big foot movement. And explain to people what it's like to backpedal. Even if you're not getting hit too much, when you're backpedaling, even if you're in shape, it's hard and it wears you out mentally. Well, mentally, it's discouraging because you can't get someone off of you. And also, it just physically, you're taking many more steps than they are because you're still in a circle, let's say. And you're on the outside of the circle making bigger movements. Your opponent's on the inside of the circle. You got to take two steps for every one of his one step just to keep the angles. And so when you're running on the outside like that, it's energy consuming. And the only thing that makes you feel good about it, like the reward, is if you can walk a guy into one of those punches and you can land it. A la, you know, uh, Wonderboy Thompson. Again, Machida was a master at that. He'd run from you, run from you. Guys would over. Uh, uh, judge it and come in too soon and run into a, a phenomenal knockout shot. Problem is, Marcus has thrown that shot and Kyle Bakhtiak ran into it and didn't do anything. You know, I'll tell you what, we have not, I don't think we've even seen one takedown attempt. We're over 11 minutes into this fight and we've seen nothing but stand up and it's been high paced action with both of these guys. But Bakhtiak just looked like he's just loading up waiting. He is. Again, see he's using that left hand, range finder, range finder. Traditional boxing, looking Wee. for the distance, establishing where he is with his left hand so he can unload with the right, come back with hard lefts. This, I mean, this has been great work by Kyle Bakhtiak. Marcus Prim is doing as good as he can, but it, it just seems like he's, he's he's too small and just can't handle the aggression and can't push Bakhtiak off of him. Oh, groin shot. <coughs> We're going to stop time there with just over three minutes to go here in the third and final round. That was a, obviously an accidental shot. We're going to take a look at the replay. Yeah, he was trying to throw a left hook right there to the outside of the ribs. And he was running and opened him up. <laughs> Bakhtiak knew he stopped right away. Yeah, he understood. And uh, Marcus made sure that they understood he got hit in the ground. Good job on his part to showcase that yeah. to the uh, judge. 
You know what? And the, the fighter is given uh, up to five minutes, I believe, to recover from a growing shot. Absolutely. And one thing I always notice, I don't believe enough fighters take with advantage you, of that time. If, and if you were offered <laughs> that time, why would you not want to take it? Yeah, the only time I wouldn't let my fighter take the full five minutes. Is if the other guy's gas yeah. and die. There you go. Man, we are in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see I, guys that are not doing well. They need would, to turn the fight well, on. I'm like, hey, man, catch your breath. Take advantage yeah. of this. All right, fight's back on just over three minutes. Kyle Bakniak done a tremendous job so far. Marcus Brimage is in the fight, but I don't think he's won a round quite yet. He's got to do something big if he wants to do it here in the third. Yeah, there you Good go. Exchange. That's just the size difference here. I think that he's going to have to go down to a uh, Bantamweight. Here he's landing. I mean, that was good combinations. It didn't even so much. I mean, besides knock the sweat off of Bakniak's head, yeah. didn't do anything. You got you to knock more than the sweat off of Bakniak to make an impression. Well, yeah, you got to, hey, earn my, my respect. You're not going to just walk me down. It was going to be a price to pay. And right now, there really isn't a price to pay. For a body back. He can just keep walking forward, landing shots. Obviously, ego wise, you don't want to be scored on, but these strikes aren't doing enough damage to deter him, to slow him down. Hence why Marcus Brimish got to run so much. Please because shots. he can't keep the guy off of him. Man, Brim Brimish is really a, a, a tough veteran because he's really hanging in there and staying composed because these are big shots. Oh, yes, they are. Ah. Two minutes to go. How much more of this can Brimage take? Referee might stop this if he doesn't do any offense. He needs forward. to start thinking about it. I know Brimage is an experienced yeah, veteran. Stop. But he's got to do something back. Or at least try to take down something different. Yeah. I agree with you. At least maybe a takedown. And even like a clinch. Clinch. Yeah, something. Because this is not working. Man, Brimage, man, he, he is composed though. Look at yeah, that. Tough he took guy. all of it. He smiled at him. I like it. I, I, I really, really respect him. Yeah, that was a tough Good one. body shot you delivery. Know, I don't think a lot of people would have uh, questioned the referee stoppage at that point. I, you had about 20 unanswered shots. I think that liver shot made a difference because he saw Marcus move right away. Just over 60 seconds to go in the third and final round. Marcus Brimage is retreating across the cage, and Kyle Bothniak is in hot pursuit. Uh, Marcus is being smart, too, about covering up. He's biding his time, trying to load up, and hopefully Kyle walks into something. He's tried to walk him into a couple left hands, but nothing's paid off yet. Body shots, body shots, knees. And Marcus is doing his best. And like I said, I can't believe he hasn't even tried to take that. I agree with you. There's nothing in him that wants to. Get... Marcus Brimage asked for the time. He yelled, he yelled time. <laughs> he knows it's close to the end, and he can't wait to get there. At this point, I don't know if he's fighting to win anymore. Just doesn't want to be finished. I, I say that, and that was a nice fireworks uh, display there for Marcus coming back. 20 seconds to go or less. Kyle Bachnack still in hot pursuit of his opponent, Marcus Brimage, who's not, I, not offering much offense back, but he's definitely hanging in there like the veteran that he is. And his corner is calling off second by second. Yeah, Brimage, I, you know, I, you really feel for him. He's hanging in there, but this is a tough night for him. No, and the referee needs to let him go out and just, you know, completely finish this fight. You know, I haven't put my hands together for anybody, yes. but I'll put my hands together yeah. for Marcus Brimage hanging in there. He's Call a tough guy. He was, he was out, just played out gunned and outside. I agree. Yeah, it, it really was obvious there in the, in the fight that nothing he threw was able to deter Kyle from marching him down. And, you know, it, you can only do so much footwork, there has to be some sting behind that float, you know? I, as we see right now, I see Yoga Ninja on their shirts, on the team shirts. So I guess that was a part of something that was going on for Marcus Brimage. And we see some boxing action. Brimage coming forward, but here we are, Kyle Bokniak. Punches, knees, kicks in the clinch, and the body shots made the difference. Yeah, there he was trying to pull the hand down, look for the body, elbows, knees. There, nice. Knee with a plump. Drop it. And see how he's pulling down? Great job. Looking for holes, trying to create some type of opening. And this was Ooh. that pretty much almost 20 shot unanswered flurry that before he threw those two shots, the referee was close to stepping in there. And just Marcus, even, you know what, they said a moral victory. I give this as a moral yeah. on his side. I mean, he was just so, so, he's so much smaller and he's just outgunned. And for him to hang in there, he's, he's earned the respect of every veteran in this sport.
as our judges here in South Carolina put the scores together. Remember, we score on striking, grappling, and cage control, and it's going to be hard to imagine anything else but a unanimous decision, decision victory for Kyle Bokniak. But I'm not the judges, so let's find out what the real judges said by throwing it in to our ring announcer, Big Mo. Ladies and gentlemen, after three full rounds, we go to your judges' scorecard for the official decision. All three judges are in agreement, ruling this a unanimous decision, declaring your winner, Kyle Crash Bokniak. Great performance. Uh, Marcus's footwork in and out, especially that first round. How frustrating it was it for the distance he was creating? Uh, yeah, he's very light in his feet. Uh, he was throwing some funky kung fu low line kicks that was really keeping me all outside. Uh, so I just had to stay true to the jab. Plus one, use my footwork and set up that jab, push step in with that right hand. So obviously with his movement, that was part of the game plan. You did follow it beautifully. Going behind the jab, keeping the pace. What allowed you to continue on holding that, even though, I mean, at first it was hard to catch him, but obviously it paid off as the fight went on. Yeah, um, you know, also those calf kicks were setting things up. I feel, feel like that was slowing him down. That was also setting up my jab, because that calf kick is even longer range weapon than the jab. Um, when he was switching stances, I was just attacking both legs. Um, that really set up my jab. I started to dig that body, started getting comfortable, and started showcasing my skill set. Phenomenal fight there. Uh, towards the end of the third round, though, I think that at one point I was mentioning there was about 15, 20 shots unanswered. Were you starting to think, hey, uh, they might call this fight, and uh, why aren't they? Yeah, I couldn't believe they didn't call the fight, but uh, props, hats off to Marcus, man. That kid is tough, tough as they come. Um, I, I can't believe I didn't put him away. I can't believe they didn't call the fight. Gee, I land like 20 knees and like 15 elbows, but uh, yeah, it's crazy. Impressive display of offense. You're a winner, Kyle Bakdiak. I just had my, my first son last week, KJ. Yeah, I love him, been hell of a week. And Brittany, I love you with my heart. After seeing what uh, women go through, this is easy, crazy. <laughs> Congratulations.